It's been 15 years since I finished my PhD. So today I'd just like to take a look back and talk about how getting a PhD changed my life, but also in some ways it really didn't. So let's rewind to the summer of 2006, about a year before I finished. Now I've told this story many times before, but basically I had a breakdown. I didn't have anywhere near enough results, the equipment I was using was constantly breaking down, and it felt like no matter what I did, the project was doomed. And at the same time, everyone else was publishing papers, presenting at conferences, and generally, at least from what I saw on the outside, doing quite well. And on the surface, I was also holding things together. And if you'd asked me, I probably wouldn't have said that I was depressed. I'd have said that the work was stressful, but I wasn't really aware of what was happening on the inside and how the tension between feeling the work was doomed, but also wanting to carry on, how that tension between those two things was tearing me apart. In a way, I think the work was a distraction. So I'd force myself to get up and go to the lab and just keep going, but it felt pointless because it seemed like I had no control over the outcome. Not only did I have no control over the outcome, it seemed like I had no control over the direction of my life. So I'd started a PhD, at least in part, because I didn't really know what else I was going to do. So when the PhD was going wrong, I didn't have any kind of backup plan. But the strange thing is that this didn't make me panic. Instead, I became detached, still going through the motions of work, but disengaged from the project and completely numb to the stress. But the stress was still there and it was starting to affect other areas of my life. Perhaps the biggest thing was that my relationship fell apart, but there were all kinds of other things going wrong as I had this kind of undirected, desperate, destructive energy that I wasn't even aware of. And ultimately, this led to my breakdown. So all these different things crashed together and I was basically forced to stop, face the reality of what was happening and change the way that I thought about and approached the work. Now, if you want to know what I did, then check out my video on the three habits that saved my PhD, which I'll also link to at the end. But basically, I managed to turn it around. I managed to calm myself down and by being more careful and engaged in the work, I got the results I needed. And then when I had to write my thesis, it wasn't just that I did the right things practically, I was in a really good place mentally. And I actually enjoyed the writing process, finishing my thesis in just three months and then passing my Viva with zero corrections. I even got back together with the girlfriend that I'd broken up with a year before. So there's a happy ending to the story. Except, getting a PhD isn't an endpoint. It's just a milestone. I was 26 when I finished, and it's not like I got the PhD and then everything was great. So I found a postdoc position within a few months of finishing, but due to admin delays, it was nearly a year before I actually started. And during most of that time, I was working in a bar for minimum wage. The high that I'd felt during writing and after finishing, that wore off pretty quickly. And without the work to focus on, many of the same old feelings of inadequacy and lack of control slowly crept back in. Now I got through that year, I survived, but I was not in a good state for much of it. And the postdoc, when it finally arrived, this was kind of the perfect job. It perfectly suited my skills, my boss was amazing, and the work went really well. It was also in a really beautiful city in the French Alps, and I had an apartment with panoramic views of the mountains. But here's the problem. It's easy to focus on fixing external circumstances or achieving external goals with the implicit expectation that this is what will make us happy. But it doesn't matter what you achieve and it doesn't matter what you have. If you're not happy with yourself, 
then anything on the outside is really just a distraction. So the path that I took in terms of doing a PhD, going down the academic route and doing postdocs, it opened up opportunities that I wouldn't otherwise have had, including the opportunity to live abroad, which was life-changing. But getting a PhD, getting the perfect postdoc, getting an amazing apartment, opening up the world, it didn't really fix anything. And since then, even though I've been able to be productive and achieve some reasonably impressive things and help other people to achieve their goals, I haven't been able to reliably reproduce and maintain that same headspace, the same sense of inner peace that I had when I was writing my thesis. And I've often felt like I just need to find the right challenge to bring out that same mindset, the same focus, the same confidence. But I've only recently realized that I've been approaching it the wrong way around. So I spent the last decade helping students develop practical skills like writing or working with academic literature or general project management or time management. But having these skills and knowing what to do isn't always enough because it's your inner state that determines the kind of energy, focus and confidence that you can bring to the task or even whether you can do the task at all. And beyond work, your inner state affects how you experience, interpret and react to everything, often in ways we aren't even aware of. So instead of working harder and harder to achieve external goals with this implicit assumption that success will make us happy, we should work on our inner state first and approach our goals from a place of calm and positivity and self-love. When I was at the end of my PhD, it was almost as if I stumbled upon this kind of healthy mindset by accident, through the right circumstances and the right events at the right time. But I think it is possible to cultivate that kind of state through conscious effort. Now, this is not an easy task because life is complicated and we're all carrying a lifetime of past experiences, beliefs and habits that affect how we think and feel and behave. So it takes time and it takes work and some of it can be quite difficult to deal with. But if your inner state affects every aspect of your life and work, surely it's got to be a priority. So what I'd like to do with my blog and with this channel is to start exploring this idea in a little bit more depth, how to cultivate that healthy mindset first and then bring it to bear on the tasks and challenges that you face. So I'll relate it mainly to PhD work because that's my area of expertise, but ultimately, fundamentally, I think it's about how to live a happy life. So if this is something that you're interested in, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and also head over to my website at phd.academy and sign up for the email list so I can let you know when I release new videos. And if you have any thoughts or questions or requests for topics you'd like me to cover, just leave a comment below. That's all from me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.